Hey guys, we just got back from 10 days traveling across Seoul, South Korea, and wanted to put together this little video for you, highlighting the top 10 things we did during our time there. One thing I wanted to mention is that one of my great pet peeves is when someone travels to a country for a couple of days and thinks they're like an expert and they release these travel guides based on their experiences. You know, I'm pretty guilty of that in making this video. I, I am in no way an expert in Seoul or South Korea, so please take these recommendations with a grain of salt. We had a great time, we loved it. I hope that you'll find some value in this. You know, do your research, or hey, don't even do your research. Just go and explore, see what you find. Anyway, here you go, 10 things to do in Seoul. Number one on our list of things to do in Seoul is to experience Korean culture at the Bukjeon Hanok Village and Gyeongbokgung Palace. These are two cultural sites really close to each other so you can see them both in only a few hours. The Bukjeon Hanok Village is an old style part of town with beautiful buildings and alleyways that show us what old Korea was like, long before Seoul became the economic powerhouse it is today. There isn't really a specific site to see here, you just want to get lost amongst the beauty of it all. There's a recommended walking path that you can follow, although we kept losing it and wandering off track. Keep in mind though that this is a real neighbourhood where people live, so don't go opening doors or walking through people's yards. From there, it's a short walk to the Gyeongbokgung Palace, the main royal palace of the Joseon dynasty. Built in 1395, it's the largest of the five grand palaces in Seoul. This palace has seen some things since then, including multiple fires, being destroyed by the Japanese occupation, and a BTS performance. Tickets to enter the palace cost 3,000 won per adult and 1,500 per child. However, it is free if you choose to come dressed in a traditional Korean hanbok, which you will see many people doing. You can get a hanbok from any of the multiple rental places nearby. One of the highlights of the palace is the changing of the guard ceremony. It's colourful, it's dramatic, and it's all in Korean, so you'll have no idea what's going on. Second wow, on our cool list table. is to cool off or stay warm in one of Seoul's towering mega malls. It's clear that Koreans love to shop and an air conditioned shopping mall is one of the best places to do this. We explored two of the biggest shopping malls in our time there, Coex Mall, known for its incredible library, and Lotte World Mall, a higher end mall with these awesome Gangnam style hands out the front. <laughs> I feel like for a family with kids, Coex Mall had more to offer with a greater range of stores and food options than Lotte World. Both malls have an aquarium which could be fun, but we didn't check them out. We also visited a few smaller malls. One cool mall was called Common Ground, which is apparently the world's largest mall made out of shipping containers. Third, check out the city from above by visiting N Seoul Tower. One thing I loved about Seoul was how it integrated with nature so well, with countless mountains competing with the skyscrapers for airspace. In fact, we were told Korea has so many mountain ranges they actually struggle to find enough flat space to build on and will often need to create land, like they did at Incheon Airport. N Seoul Tower can be seen from pretty much anywhere in Seoul, as it's right in the heart of it. Just a short stroll from Yeongdong Station, you can take the cable car up the mountain and enjoy the panoramic views of the city. To be honest with you, the views from the mountain top were just as good as the ones we got at the top of the tower. So if you're looking to save some cash or short on time, I'd say you could skip the tower and just enjoy the viewing platforms all over the mountain. Well, the tower did have a cool light projection room, which was a lot of fun. Remember to grab a lock at the Daiso before you come so you can secure your love for your special one, along with the thousands of other locks weighing down the mountain. Take a stroll down Cheong Yecheon Stream, a reclaimed stream that works its way through the city. So this stream used to just be a whole lot of trash. I think it was literally like a dump site for the city. And then one year they just decided to clean it up and now it's where all the locals hang out. Cute. Yeah, you can see there's so many people just hanging out here. It's very peaceful. I guess it's kind of a nice little break from the craziness of the city. Because you're below street level, it's easy to forget you're in the center of a big city. You'll find tons of families and couples enjoying the stream at all times of the day. We recommend getting off in Dongdae Mun, where you'll find plenty of markets and food, but also the Dongdae Mun Design Plaza, a building from the future. I loved exploring this building, its beautiful curves and colors, and wish we could have come back at night to see it all lit up. I think it's a function center of some sort. We didn't go inside, but viewing it from the outside was awesome. Get lost in Hongdae and Myeongdong. While every little neighborhood of Seoul has its own personality, we spent the most time exploring these two areas. Myeongdong is the Korean beauty and street food hub. 
with long alleyways lined with cosmetic stores and street food stands. Our apartment was in this area, so we would wander these streets every day and try a lot of the different restaurants here. Another fun area is Hongdae, which is where the university is located. It naturally caters to a younger crowd, so it won't be uncommon to see people stumbling out of bars at all times of the day. There were a lot of cool shops in this area and we had some great food here. I recommend heading to either of these neighborhoods with no real plans and just wandering around. See how the locals eat and shop and live. Traveling is all about stepping out of the familiar and into the unknown, so just go, explore, and see what you find. If you were in Seoul, we would definitely recommend scheduling a trip to the DMZ to see a unique piece of history you really can't find anywhere else in the world. The demilitarized zone is the border between North and South Korea and made a great half day experience that even the kids loved. You have to do it in a tour, you can't do it on your own and whilst we usually avoid group tours, this one was awesome. We have a whole video dedicated to the DMZ tour so we won't go into too much detail, but some highlights included exploring secret underground tunnels built by North Korea, looking over at the north from the observatory and eating carnival food, something we didn't expect to find at the DMZ. For all those street food lovers, you'll want to head to Kwangjung Market, one of Seoul's oldest food markets offering every type of street food you could want. What was really cool about this place was that you would sit down at the vendor's market on a tiny stool and eat the food that was prepared freshly in front of you. It felt so local. I had a mung bean pancake, which although sounding pretty average, was actually delicious. The market goes on and on for miles, so make sure you come hungry with cash in hand. We didn't try it, but we saw lots of stores selling live octopus if you're feeling brave. Number eight is one for the kids and the young at heart. Head to one of the theme parks in Seoul. We actually visited two, Lotte World, the oldest and most popular theme park in Korea, and Lego Land, which only opened a month ago and was located two hours outside of Seoul. We weren't super impressed with Lotte World, it felt a little tired and was really busy. We loved Lego Land so much. We have full videos on both theme parks on our channel, so we won't go into them too much now, but day at a theme park is good awesome. for the soul. <laughs> Eat bingsu. Seriously, when anyone asks what our favorite experience was in Korea, we tell them it was eating bingsu. Now here in Hawaii, we have something called shave ice. Finely shaved ice covered in syrups and toppings. Bingsu is next level shave ice. What makes it different from Hawaiian shave ice or your regular snow cone is that the ice itself is creamy. I guess they freeze sweetened milk and then shave that. So as you eat it, it melts and becomes even creamier. I still dream of bingsu every day. We got ours from a chain called Sulbing and never tried anywhere else because we always wanted the same thing over and over again. Seriously, 10 stars for Sulbing. I would go back just to get this bingsu. Our final thing to do is a bit more effort but highly, highly recommended and that is to make the trip out to Alpaca World. Of all the days we had in Korea, a day at Alpaca World was probably the highlight because you're out in nature, hanging out with alpacas, living the dream. It's about two hours outside of Seoul, so we did a full day tour that included a stop at Alpaca World, followed by a stop at Legoland, but it was awesome. Our guide picked us up near our apartment, drove us out to each stop, and then drove us back to Seoul. I'll leave a link in the comments to this tour, it was well worth it. We have a full video dedicated to Alpaca World, so be sure to check that out. There you have it, the 10 things we recommend doing in Seoul. Uh, what a great city, what a good time we had. Thanks for watching you guys. Let me know if you agree, if you disagree. Put all your thoughts in the comments below. We'll see you in the next video.